Now, here in Hong Kong, at least two people are in serious condition after violent protests ran into the night. Police say 11 people were arrested during Wednesday's demonstrations for alleged disorderly conduct, unlawful assembly, and assaulting police. Authorities say some people use bricks and sharpened metal poles. And there remains a heavy police presence around central Hong Kong. Lawmakers have postponed a debate on the extradition bill at the heart of this unrest. It's not clear when the discussions will resume. Now, Ivan Watson is monitoring the situation for us in Hong Kong. He joins us now. And Ivan, 24 hours after those violent street clashes, there's been this temporary calm. What have you seen today? Yeah, Thursday was definitely a lull, a kind of soggy aftermath to uh, the drama and the violence that was playing out in the streets of, of downtown Hong Kong and, and here in Tamar Park in front of the Legislative Council where I'm standing right now. This was filled in the afternoon with tens of thousands of protesters and then it was the scene of riot police firing tear gas and, and making baton charges to clear people out of these uh, areas. Uh, the scene on Thursday couldn't have been more different. Uh, there were pockets of some demonstrators. There were uh, tropical downpours, uh, so not large groups of people. There may be 100 people in front of the Legislative Council right now, a, a religious group singing Christian songs, but definitely a much more subdued scene that we saw yesterday. And, and could that be in part because both sides had simply exhausted themselves overnight? There was evidence mm -hmm. to that effect. We saw uh, squads of riot police charging through, breaking up barricades at 10 and 11 p.m. Uh, on the streets and then moving through and then minutes later demonstrators re-erecting the barricades but by the early pre-dawn hours both the riot police and the, most of the demonstrators were gone leaving empty barricaded roads through the center of Hong Kong. We've gotten more about the casualties that around 80 people hospitals say were uh, wounded the police say that at least 20 police officers were injured in the melees. Uh, I saw scenes of police firing tear gas uh, and uh, um, rubber bullets and these kind of pepper balls uh, at people. I saw some of the demonstrators hurling stones and giant metal poles that could hurt people. Uh, there is still anger. Human rights groups have cr criticized the police for allegedly using too much force. And the police have said that they used the appropriate measures in response to what they say were a riot and threats against their own uh, forces. Christy. Yeah, calm may have been restored, but the anger is still out there. Ivan Watson reporting live. Thank you. Uh, there was a remarkable moment during Wednesday's protests when a member of the Legislative Council confronted police about the way that they were handling the situation. Take a look. Oh, Charles Mark was the legislator you just saw in that video. He joins us now live. And Charles, thank you for joining us. In that video, we thank see you, you furious. You are yelling at Hong Kong police for disrespecting the legislature. Could you take us back to that moment and describe what happened? Well, what uh, you didn't show be right before we left the room that we were coming out from was actually uh, why I got so angry at the time, because uh, we're legislators. Uh, like a parliament and uh, what we see what we saw yesterday was that the police were coming into our building occupying the building in essence and uh, uh, stationing there to uh, supposedly uh, help secure the security of our building but in, re in reality what I saw was there were uh, a couple of suspects that they have probably arrested taken from the crowd and brought into our building and behind closed door uh, 
I don't know what they were doing. So I had access mm. to that particular room uh, on the ground floor, and I opened the door and saw two young people, probably less under 20 years old, and they were crouching on the floor, and uh, with six or eight very angry policemen surrounding him. And I thought this was inappropriate, not to be something that happened, shouldn't be happening in a legislature's building. It is totally, mm. un, it is totally inappropriate. And, and, and the reason yeah. why the legislative council, the, the complex here in Hong Kong, has become a flashpoint is because of a piece of legislation, the extradition yeah, bill. Yeah. You know, and let's talk about the, the future of this thing, because, because there are enough votes for this controversial bill to go through. You know, the, the debate may have been delayed because of the protest action yesterday, but is it inevitable that it's going to pass? Well, uh, at least uh, today, Thursday and Friday, we are not going to resume the council meeting. Uh, we have to understand that there are enough votes, but uh, I hope international audience will understand that in Hong Kong, uh, we, the opposition, the pro-democracy camp, we got the majority of the votes in the general election. but. We, uh, because of the system, we always ended up with the minority, as the minority in the legislature. That's the problem that led to all these problems, <laughs> because uh, the people feeling that, you know, they have the majority opinion. But in any case, in, in, in most of the, these controversial situations, uh, their will will not be passed in the uh, legislature. So what happened right now, uh, I cannot totally estimate. I mean, it, for any particular city, if you have a march of uh, one million people on the street, and Hong Kong, remembering our population is just over seven million, you have mm. virtually almost one in seven people marching on the street. And what did the government do? Did they enter into a dialogue with people opposing the bill, with legislators or the public? No. Our chief executive disappeared all through yesterday, today. Uh, we could only see her on TV, taped canned interviews and uh, messages to say that these people are violent and so on. You show on the, uh, on your, the video that we just saw. I mean, these mm. people are indeed charging the police line, but they were doing it with umbrellas. They were, there were some shots of, uh, you know, uh, steel pipes on the ground, but there's no video shot of anybody hitting policemen with those weapons. Uh, but there are a lot of video sh uh, shots of, pe of, of police firing rubber bullets, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, tear gas canister, canisters and so on at the crowd, you know, at horizontal, uh, yeah. uh, uh, in a horizontal way. And the, these are, yeah. and, and we have people with shots that they, they, one guy, actually a secondary school teacher, actually got uh, hit uh, right near his eye and, uh, and yeah. there were some reports that he might lost his eyesight. And this person was actually arrested by the police. Yeah, and, and these and are the rioters we, that they're talking about. Yeah, and, and, and CNN, yeah, the, the Hong Kong police are calling the protesters rioters, and we've made an appeal at yeah. CNN for um, eyewitnesses on the ground who have picked up any video of brutality um, that took place on Wednesday yeah. to, to send it. And you could find it off of my Twitter feed. Um, uh, Charles, even before the protest action on, on Wednesday, even that massive march on Sunday months ago, you appealed to the United States for help on this with the extradition yeah. bill. In March, you were part of this delegation of pro-democracy Hong Kong lawmakers. You met with Nancy Pelosi, with NSC and State Department yes. officials. You asked the U.S. government for help, but what can the U.S. do? Well, at the time, uh, actually, the primary purpose of our visit back in March was actually to tell the U.S. government not to sanction Hong Kong because of the uh, Hong Kong U.S. Policy Act. And right at that time, the report was coming out. But we did tell them that we don't want the bill, uh, if there were economic sanctions and so on, we don't want that to hurt all of Hong Kong. But at the same time, we were telling the U.S. officials and, uh, and Nancy Pelosi that uh, they have to keep an eye on Hong Kong, shine the night on Hong Kong, and, and let the world, and especially, of course, the United States, see the problems with our administration. And, of course, we pointed to them one of these problems up and coming would be the extradition bill, because it would not only affect the Hong Kong people uh, uh, being uh, possibly uh, extradited mm. at will to China, but also affect Americans, American business interests, American 
uh, passing through or living in Hong Kong are all going to be uh, 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 in danger. We looked at yeah. the situation of the uh, Canadians, two Canadians that, that are taken uh, hostage or imprisoned in China without due process and so on. And you could see the, the damage of such a, an extradition bill. Yeah, that's why you made that appeal. Back in March, you knew that a storm was a brewing. Yes. Charles Mock, thank you for joining us.